Hello, what's up guys? I'm Kyle from KGR, and this is the Knuckles Nendoroid. The Sonic Nendoroid came out over 10 years ago, and for the longest time, we were convinced that it was only gonna be Sonic. And then last year, they revealed that we were getting Tails and Knuckles, and Tails came out and he was all right, but now that we have Knuckles, I am so split on this figure, because aesthetically, I love him. I think he looks perfect as a Nendoroid. But playing with him is a, a bit of a pain sometimes, and I'm not entirely sure if that's completely Good Smile's fault or whoever sculpted Knuckles. Knuckles, as an action figure, is tough to play with sometimes because of his giant dreads on his head, so it's always going to interfere with his arms. That's a problem I knew going into it, but some of the problems that Good Smile themselves probably added to the problem was the head, like the face, doesn't like fully lock in or feel like a firm fit really because like sometimes you'll still have like a noticeable gap or sometimes if it's not a full gap like you can see that the face will come off or the arms will fall off and stuff like that but then it brings in the conversation of nendoroids not being proper action figures they're meant to just pose and then just leave it on your desk or shelf but man look at him i just want to play with him he looks so cool if I would have imagined what a Knuckles Nendoroid would look like, let's say like five years ago, the way it is captured on this Nendoroid is probably exactly how I imagine it, if not better. If you take a look at him, aesthetically, he's just about perfect. I love how Knuckles looks as a Nendoroid. He was the one I was the most excited for between Tails and Knuckles, and he came out exactly how I wanted him. He's just about perfect but you probably noticed a few marks on him like on his head or this small scuff on his gloves that wasn't good smile that was me testing my limits and doing photography and getting very frustrated with this figure because the biggest thing i was concerned about with a knuckles nendoroid is can you make him glide because clearly you can see tails like flying with his propeller tails but Knuckles glides, but can you make Knuckles glide? And I am here to say, yes, yes you can. It is a small pain, but yes you can. For some reason, I have a huge difficulty getting the stand into the back of Knuckles' back. I think it's because of these giant dreads being in the way, so I can't get that firm grip the way I want to. I just gotta like feed it in and just hope for the best. But I feel like when it comes to like posing him with the gliding stance, I think it'd be better to put him with a Figma stand. I actually haven't tested that. Let's, 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 let's test that right now, actually. Thankfully, I always have these kind of stands on deck. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have him kind of gliding over. So we're just gonna peg in here and hope for the best. Okay, oh, okay, we're getting somewhere. Very nice. With this said, yeah, when it comes to like mid-air poses, I highly recommend doing like the Figma stands, but Knuckles himself is so heavy. <laughs> That the stand does not like that. But if you do want to do a pose like gliding with Knuckles, it's not completely perfect. He's, it seems that his head has to be tilted one way or the other to make it look like he's gliding. So the easiest way I noticed when it comes to posing his head in particular is to take off the arms first, which it's an android, so the arms really come off real easy. And then you put his head back and then put his arms back on, at, you know, after you, you make it so his fists are more upright but then you try to do that and it isn't as flush so I like to turn it a little bit and then tuck it in from the side if we can oh as you can see you're starting to see the small frustrations I have when it comes to this figure but yeah, if you tuck it in from the side it's actually not awful now let's see if I can get it in from this side let's err uh, the dreads really do get in the way and it is going to warp it a little bit like from the peg but depending on where you uh exactly what angle you want him to glide at you can probably turn the head either way you want but there you go knuckles can glide but again you're gonna need a really strong base or a strong arm because he is heavy which speaking of i noticed he was quite a bit top heavy uh but i think that's because i live in an old apartment so the floors are not very even if i put a level right here it's not going to be even so if you suffer the same problem that i do you might be struggling to play with this guy but if you're on a flat surface he might be fine 
but I find it silly that I have more trouble standing him up than Sonic. Because I feel like Sonic's design, aesthetically, is more top-heavy than what Knuckles would be. With the Tails and Android, I noticed the ankles were on ball hinges, and I thought that was a weird design, and I never understood why they did that. Thankfully, with Knuckles, they did keep it as ball pegs, but it looks like his socks would be, like, loose by themselves, and it looks like they kind of are, because you can, like, absolutely spin his sock around. So, like, that's, like, somewhat separate. So why Tails didn't do this is beyond me. But the only thing I have a possible minor complaint on when it comes to the knuckles design outside of the dreads being a thing because again that's just knuckles is not really good smiles thing is the way that the hips are designed so they are on uh ball hinges that are like not directly connected to the leg itself like the ball hinge is a separate piece versus the leg while if i bring over a sonic the ball hinge itself is actually designed directly into the leg which i feel like aesthetically probably ages but functionality i like more because aesthetically this absolutely looks better but unfortunately sometimes it can cause some issues on trying to pose him the way you need to and like i said earlier the face comes off relatively easy and it's a little annoying so i feel like if i want to pose him the way i want to i have to like move rearrange it the way i need to and i'm not sure how well you could tell but there is definitely some stress on the peg when i'm trying to rearrange it and I feel if they would have designed it the way they did with Sonic, the peg itself would have been bigger and stress lines wouldn't be there as easily. And unfortunately, they don't give you extra pieces like these. They give you an extra neck, but no extra like pieces for the hips or anything. Which typically, Good Smile would probably just send you a new piece, but like let's say years go by and it finally breaks, they probably won't have pieces readily available. When I first opened him up and started playing with him, I noticed I had to immediately put him under a hair dryer because his ankle wouldn't move at first and getting the eyes out was a huge pain and it still is a huge pain to this day. Which leads me to the next thing, the accessories. In comparison to how Sonic was when he first originally came out, this is severely lacking in comparison to Sonic. There are some advantages and disadvantages, like for example we have a replacement left arm for, uh, for Knuckles, unlike Sonic. Tails did as well, I'm pretty sure. But what I would want out of a modern Sonic Nendoroid is here, like different eyes, different muzzles, and uh, one replacement leg. I, I wish we would've gotten two, but I guess one's fine. Then we got our replacement neck piece. We also have our Nendoroid stand, which is quite big compared to Sonic. I don't know why they made them that big for them, but that's okay. And then the backdrop itself is also supposed to count as a thing because they show him with this. But then you also have those giant fold lines right there so it doesn't come across as clean as what the original prototype was supposed to show off. Because I would have imagined it being a giant acrylic display, not whatever this is. But anyway, when it comes to swapping out the faces, it's relatively easy. So what you do is that you take the face out and if you want to swap the eyes, you gotta press the eyes in. Now make sure you don't use your fingernails trying to push that in because you don't want to scratch the little eye detail. Press that back and you're probably gonna struggle and that seems to be a common problem with what I've been doing. So to press and maybe you might have it fall out but you're gonna hear a very angry snap. And when I hear that snap, it has me scared that I'm gonna break this thing. I notice I love posing him in particular with the eyes looking to the right. And I love how the eye just like bleeds onto this. It's mainly because they use, I'm pretty confident, the exa same exact stamp on both sides and they just rearrange it to like uh, shift it to whatever eyes they need to, which cost effective, that actually works really well. I like that. They just slip it back in and the way it slips in, like it feels nice and firm. It doesn't feel difficult to put in, but taking it out for some reason, stupid difficult. I don't know why. And then if you want to take out the muzzle, you just slip that out. And then you can just put this one in, and there you go. You have his new face. And then you have another muzzle where it shows him with his teeth gritting, like more being aggressive than smiling, and it's pointed to the other side. So it's nice to see that we can have the mouth be on different sides and still look really good. Then you put that face back on, then we have a new serious looking knuckles. And then if you want to swap out an arm to go for a completely different arm, because we have one bent arm that goes out more but then we have this open hand which sonic figures having open hands i'm kind of used to it's no real problem really but the problem that i have 
is that there's a giant peg in there. So if I want to use his hand for other things, I have to hide the peg. Now the peg is there for the Chaos Emerald, which it works, but it looks so awkward. And I'm scared of trying to get the Chaos Emerald app out or of it falling and end up snapping the peg. Sonic and Tails can hold it just by having it be there. I'm pretty confident Knuckles can hold this just by holding it. I don't think the peg was completely necessary, but hey, I'm not a doctor. Which speaking of, if you do want to use the Chaos Emerald, so it's going to be like a ball peg set up just like the blue Chaos Emerald with tails. But I thought it was just a simple ball peg, but no, you can fit a proper peg in there. But I don't think it goes all the way down though. I think there's always going to be a gap. When you see him holding it from the front, it looks mostly fine. But any other angle, you're going to notice that peg. And I didn't know that peg was going to be there looking at the prototype pictures. So I kind of wish I can take that peg out or something because I'm not a fan of the peg. So let's put that back in. And originally, I actually had quite a struggle trying to get that Chaos Emerald in there because I didn't fully understand how exactly it was supposed to fit. But there he is holding the Chaos Emerald. And of course, depending on how you hold him, uh, his face might try and come out real easy. And yeah, it looks great. I love it. But let's say you don't want to have Knuckles having this hand on and you want to swap for the fist to be into this arm. I noticed I struggle with that. So first up, let's take the Chaos Emerald out if we can. So the sock cuff right here is separate from the glove, which aesthetically it looks fine. But if I want to swap it out, I got to be very careful on how I take it out because it can become very annoying to take it out. So let's say if I pull it out, this is most likely going to happen. So the peg ends up getting stuck into the arm. So you have to put these two pieces down, extract this out, and then reassemble it. And if you're gonna be consistently like changing the poses on this and trying to be creative, this is gonna become a very annoying process. And let's take this out. I feel like if you take it out at a certain angle, it's easy to keep it all in there. But the fact that you gotta make an effort to make sure it stays in there, again gets very annoying so i want the hand to like curl up a little bit more so we're gonna have the peg going upwards we're gonna put that in here and then we're gonna peg that in there and then with this arm uh it doesn't go out as much as this arm does but it still is at a good angle and this one has the thumbs up or in my case a thumbs down with how much of a pain it is to play with this figure so we're gonna try to get that out we're gonna try to put it at an angle and the, the, the thing has a little bit of stress on there and it's also trying to come apart. Nice. So we're gonna take out this arm. Gotta do the same thing for this. There we go, that actually came out relatively easy. I like that. Put that in there. And I didn't notice that his arm fell out. That happens. Try and get that in there without the dread being completely in the way. Now I wanna switch back to the happy teeth gritting. And as you can tell with me, like trying to just play with this figure and pose it the way I need to, it becomes a pain to actually play with. But once he's posed, he looks so good. I love it so much. It's a strong love-hate relationship with this figure. And when I compare him next to Sonic, like the heights don't add up completely perfectly, I don't think, but like Again, I love the way they look together so much, and I'm so excited to do more photo shoots outside with these figures. I have so many plans. But it still bothers me that, that Sonic got like a gloss finish for his shoes, but not tails or knuckles. I don't know why that happened. Whatever. And then we also have the bent leg right here, if I can get that out. So what I like to do with this guy is take out the face, and we're gonna make him have the straight arm punching. Which, by the way, trying to figure out which arm is which is so annoying because it's not labeled or anything. I know with the legs, they were labeled on Sonic. But, like, at least with this arm, you can see a slight bend on, like, where it's supposed to go. But the other one, not entirely. It looks like it's just a straight arm. Which, I don't like that because, like, I feel like with Sonic, you have the nice bend right there. And it looks really good. And then I noticed with Tails, they're straight. They are absolutely straight arms. So we're gonna take this out. And again, gotta reassemble the glove, of course. So we're gonna put the straight arm with that. And we're gonna take off 
this and bend this the way we need to. Er, there we go. When it comes to his face, I think what we're gonna do is gonna do the other mouth, but we're also gonna make him look straight. So we're gonna push those. Not fully out, there we go. Push that back in. We gotta dig this one out. Push this through. And I know recently Jack Specific put out a collector's classic Knuckles. And some of you might be wondering how does this favor in comparison to that? I don't know, I didn't buy it. So I wanna keep this arm on. I want that to still be emphasized that he has it curled up. And again, the way you pose his arm might push his face out, so that gets annoying. Or we try to push it back and then his arm gets pushed out or fallen out. Well, that's also a thing. If you move his head with the curved arm, it just dramatically moves it up. You know what? We're just gonna put these in. Put it the way we need to. Then, and then that didn't work. Okay, oh, we're gonna push that through. We're gonna push that right there. There we go. That's almost the way I like it. There we go. Unfortunately, I'm like covering his teeth a little bit, but there we go. We are getting there slowly but surely. And there's Knuckles punching, doing his thing. And if you're wondering how all three of them look together, uh, I already have tails in a certain pose. I don't want to mess with that. So here's a picture of all three of them together that I've already did previous to this video. Now tails definitely sticks out like a sore thumb out of all three. I feel Knuckles looks the best aesthetically, but design wise and playing with wise and I don't know. Just overall liking Sonic is absolutely the best. I don't have any issues like this playing with Sonic. So if you're wondering which Nendoroid is the best out of all three, Sonic is definitely going to be the best. But as much as I struggle playing with Knuckles and just get angry playing with this and struggle, he definitely looks so good. So it almost makes it worth it. At the end of the day, when I look at Knuckles on my shelf, after I'm done posing him and doing whatever, he looks great. And I'm very happy to have him. He makes me smile when I see him on my shelf. However, the process of playing with him is so painful that like I put him down, I gotta put him back on my shelf after I'm done posing him and just don't wanna touch it for a while. So can I recommend getting this guy and playing with him? I don't know, it's, it's tough. Because when I sent pictures of me posing this to my friends, they thought, Wow, Knuckles looks really good. So that impression of, wow, this looks really nice, I want to get it, is there. But playing with him and posing him, what, at least with me, I struggle a lot. I'm not sure if anybody else has any issues like I did, because I didn't see any other reviews prior to this. But man, why? And it sucks that I struggle to get him in this pose, because I do like this pose a lot. Like I'm actually debating on keeping this on my shelf. I don't know if I like this more, or... Uh, this pose right here. So yes, he's a good looking figure, but he's still being plagued of being a Knuckles figure and being a pain to play with because of his giant dreads. I wish you could see, but uh, uh, I have like wallpapers that are like constantly rotating. And the one that's popping up right now is actually one of the Sonic and Knuckles ones. I'll see if I can put, pop it up right here. I think that's just really funny. I, I think that's quite ironic. So if you do want to purchase this guy yourself, there will be links in the description, some of them being affiliate links, so it does help me out financially and helps me further to afford more figures for this channel. I feel like if you're just a casual Knuckles fan, um, then yeah, he's probably worth picking up. Um, I feel like if you had any of the other figures prior, it makes a good diorama because of the amount of accessories they come with as well, especially Sonic, but Knuckles, Besides body pieces and a Chaos Emerald, he doesn't really come with a whole lot. Sonic, I feel, is the best Nendroid out of, out of all of them because of the amount he comes with, as well as just being the easiest to play with. Knuckles, I feel, looks the best aesthetically, but he's such a pain to play with, and I don't understand why he's this much of a pain. Tails! He's kind of cute, but, like, a lot of people don't like the way he looks. I think he looks better in person than he does in the pictures, but, like, man, it... it he still sticks out like a sore thumb. And that's all I gotta say for this video. So if you're new and you like what you saw, you know what to do. 
Links in the description are gonna have either my social media or where you can purchase this guy. And let me know in the comments, do you plan on picking this up yourself? Because I was, I'm so split. I, I, I love him and hate him at the same time. I'm happy to have him, but there are times where I'm like, ugh. And originally I was very excited to see where this could possibly go with more Sonic Nendoroids. I wanted an Amy Nendoroid with her Turo cards and her hammer. I wanted a Metal Sonic because Metal Sonic is cool. I wanted a Shadow because of all the Shadow love that's been happening recently. And now Rouge is finally starting to get more merchandise and love. But if they turn out any way like Tails and Knuckles did, I don't know how much more I want when it comes to Sonic Nendroids. So that's a tough question. After playing with Tails and Knuckles, do I want more Sonic stuff? I mean, I partially do. And, and if they announce anything, I'll get excited for it. But the execution on how they did it with these figures, I, it is nowhere as good as what they did with Sonic. So do you think that we should get more Sonic Nendoroids after how this is executed? I'll let you sound off for that one because I'm not sure how to feel, to be honest. But I dragged this on for too long. Thank you for watching. I love you guys to death, and I'll see you on the next one. So peace, peace.